Hello and welcome back to the latest episode of Bargaining 2022. My name is Harsha. I'm with the Mobilization Committee of PSAC 901, and I'm here to provide you with an update with all the latest information from the bargaining table and a quick primer of some technical information that you need to be aware of. Uh, as you might already know, the Mobilization Committee of PSAC 901 has been working very hard to conduct a series of departmental information meetings. If you've missed those, hopefully this can help you catch up to where we are right now. In this presentation today, I'm going to be starting from the very top and I'll be providing a, a roadmap of negotiations. So what negotiations typically look like and which step of that process we are in currently. I'll be providing a refresher on bargaining demands and then I'll characterize the attitude of the employer, Queen's faculty relations and how they've responded to negotiations so far. And lastly, uh, sorry, I'll be talking about how our mobilization efforts have influenced the bargaining negotiations. And last, I'll be talking to you about what a strike quote is what it is not, and some general information about strikes. So to begin with, when the uh, collective agreement between a union and employer expires, the union serves the employer with a notice to bargain. They enter negotiations where both, provide, both create a bargaining team who provide proposals and counter proposals to one another in an attempt to reach a tentative agreement. This tentative agreement is then taken back to all the members of the union who have an opportunity to vote for or against the tentative agreement at which point, if they do vote to ratify it, it becomes the new collective agreement, and this cycle continues for another period of five years. However, within the process of negotiations, there is a possibility that neither side can achieve agreement on a demand. Uh, and if this happens, or if one of the two sides walks away from the negotiations table, then the two sides enter what is known as an impasse. In an impasse, both sides are able to apply to the Ministry of Labor for a conciliation officer who can then force the two parties to meet in the hope that they then achieve a tentative agreement. And the union additionally is able to uh, vote on a strike mandate in the hopes of forcing the employer's hand at the table. So before uh, I move on to what our bargaining demands are, I'm going to uh, make it very clear here that we are currently in the process of conciliation with Queen's University over an impasse that we reached in December. Uh, and in order to understand why we are here, I'm going to talk to you about what our bargaining demands were. In January 2021, PSAC 901's bargaining committee began to work on a survey of the entire community of graduate student workers at Queen's to identify what our critical bargaining priorities were. Simultaneously, we were doing a large amount of research on what collective agreements within the academic sector look like, what universities like York Carlton, University of Toronto, Western had that we did not within our collective agreement in order to inform our bargaining demands for this cycle of negotiations. Based on these, we produced some initial reports and some uh, potential options that we can create as bargaining demands. And these were voted upon by the entire membership at our annual general meeting in April 2021. Uh, based on what transpired in this meeting, our, some of our key demands are as follows. We're asking for assured employment contracts in the first extended year of the PhD and master's programs. We're asking for union administered funds that can help members access mental health support when they need it. We're asking for uh, things like academic and professional development funds, which can help us be better TAs, RAs, and TFs, better workers at our own jobs. We're asking for hardship funds that can help us deal with these precarious times. We're asking for paid leave provisions, such as uh, provisions for paid leave for emergency purposes, gender affirmation, et cetera. We're asking for improved housing conditions in terms of either more community housing for graduate student workers or uh, funds that help offset excess rent for workers who cannot access community housing. We're asking for ongoing and dynamic paid anti-racism and paid sexual violence prevention trainings. We've been asking for timelines to uh, timelines for emergency response plans, and especially for members who are dealing with disabilities. And we're asking for improved access or improved processes for accommodations for employees. All of these demands uh, are not only something uh, are not only that are, are not only demands that are extremely critical in these austere periods. They are also baseline in a large number of other universities in Ontario. For example, the uh, union administered funds for uh, access to mental health support exists in Western University. Paid leave provisions uh, exist in most universities, including York University of Toronto, Carleton, etc. And paid anti-racism and sexual violence prevention training are the kind of demands that don't need to be identified by us, they are recognized as critical by Queen's University itself. Um, so why are we 
in in a position where we are at an impasse or in conciliation if our bargaining demands are so and uh, are so reasonable and baseline in order to describe this i'm going to characterize the attitude of the the attitude of the employer in the bargaining negotiations process so when we applied uh, sorry when we served queens with a notice to bargain in may we uh, initially re received extremely cold response from queens who took the posture that it was surprising that we were even choosing to uh, un undergo negotiations for a new contract because uh, they want us to believe that the pandemic has had an extremely uh, a, an extremely severe impact on the university so as of july we received a few negotiation dates for august and extremely slow movement um, and this stretched on as far as early september where queens continued to drag their heels at the negotiation table with little to no response on any of the proposals that we had forwarded this was around the same time when we held our barbecue our fall barbecue uh, in late september uh, where around 300 members showed up and displayed a general feeling of unrest with the fact that we had made no movement whatsoever at the negotiation table shortly after this there was brief movement on some of our uh, demands and this kind of approach of extremely slow movement with consistent stonewalling on key demands continued as far as november around this time uh, queens faculty relations who we bargained with at the table began to take a more hostile tone in the bargaining negotiations at this point of time we held our value for work rally on value our work rally on campus where we marched from stoffer library to richardson to demand that queens take the bargaining process more seriously and actually respond with genuine counter proposals um this resulted in some movement at the table we received tentative proposals on paid trainings but along with the insistence that we withdraw grievances that are currently ongoing with the university subsequently queens walked away calling our non monetary demands unacceptable and offered no new dates we did not know it at that point but we had entered an impasse with queens queens in january continued to be unwilling to bargain in good faith refused to meet with us and provided us with no new dates we continued to email our proposals to them and hope for movement but this did not happen we began the process of conciliation at that point and the ministry of labor assigned a conciliation officer who has now brought both parties back to meet so before we move on to how our mobilization efforts have kind of influenced all of this an important thing to talk about is queens's rhetoric at the table and whether or not it is genuine the first thing that queen said to us was that the pandemic affected them very severely unlike us precarious graduate student workers and it's very important for us to point out the hypocrisy in this approach a queens has had immensely reduced operational costs while not waiving tuition at any point of time so as a business while reducing their operational costs their stream of income continue to be exactly the same it is likely that queens has in position has improved if anything within the pandemic additionally queens is a huge business with an immense investment portfolio and given the neoliberal bailout culture that uh, that happens with every kind of economic crisis that we enter it is likely that queens has made immense profits over their investment portfolios and the fact is simply that queens is not unwilling to open their purse strings it's simply that they're not willing to open it for graduate students we know that in the homecoming parties in the fall semester of 2021 queens university was willing to dish out hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay police to monitor to babysit queens hoko parties what the, all of this tells us is that while queens has the money and while queens is willing to spend that money it does not treat graduate students and graduate student workers especially as a priority on this campus i'd said earlier that i'll talk more about mental health and these are it's one of the key demands that we have at this stage we know today that queens has a mental health crisis access to mental health care at queens is extremely limited and when we do have access to mental health care through queens instituted processes we have to go through processes like triage teams which then give us a limited number of uh, therapy sessions and so on when our needs can be much more severe than that and in all of this queens is response to our mental health crisis which has obviously been made much worse by a pandemic is to kind of create a uh, programs like the thrive week where we attend a series of ted talks which don't really do much for us uh, while allowing the university to say that they have attempted to address mental health and i mean that the 
the seriousness of queens when it comes to treating to dealing with our mental health is clear when principal patrick dean attempts to apply a bandage to this grave wound by giving us a virtual tour of his family farm and reminding all of us that we neither have family farms nor the opportunity to afford one of them for a long period of time in our future <sighs> having mentioned all this let me get back to what our mobilization has been working on and how mobilization efforts have been going while most of our mobilization within the pandemic has had to be online we've had brief windows of time where campus and you know the capacity to meet has existed in those periods of time we conducted firstly our fall barbecue event which had an attendance of over 300 members and showed a clear intent and unrest amongst graduate student workers in terms of the way queens was treating us at the bargaining table this was followed shortly after by increased attention from queens university and some movement on some of our proposals subsequently we had our rally which i mentioned earlier in november and at this point of time we also received a, a large amount of media coverage because we marched from uh, stoffer to richardson and created a you know a, a extremely publicly visible uh, action uh, one of the key things that i'd like to point to your attention at this point of time is the statement from michael willnew of faculty relations who bargains with us in the second column of this newspaper article here uh, in response to a uh, concerns from graduate student workers about the culture of overwork and the tendency to be drained out uh, due to balancing not only our graduate studies but also our contracts which can go over and above the kind of typical number of hours that we are expected to work michael willnew responded with the uh, comment that we work no more than an average of 10 hours per week what all of this makes very clear is that while we work with some amazing colleagues in terms of our employment supervisors in terms of faculty frequently who are very understanding of the kind of demands that are being placed on us the people who were bargaining with faculty relations have little to no clue about what the nature of graduate student work is and perhaps the only thing they are generally concerned about is the bottom line for queens university but anyway our value for work rally and its associated media coverage was so significant that some of our non monetary proposals began to uh, receive counter proposals uh tentative counter proposals uh we also received a, a, a tentative proposal on paid and mandatory anti racist training and sexual violence prevention training at this point of time but we have since entered an impasse so what happens next given that queens has walked out and refused to offer new dates we have been forced to declare this impasse we have been forced to uh, undergo a, a process of conciliation but we need to also consider other processes that might actually create wins for us at the bargaining table so we've been talking about how we've pressured queens through rallies letter campaigns social media but within this impasse we need to talk about the possibility of a strike so what is a strike what can it achieve what is a strike mandate how is that different from a strike in itself and what does a strike look like for graduate student workers so first and foremost a strike is when unionized workers withhold their labor in our case uh, work such as teaching grading and tutorials uh, for research assistance their research as well in and this is in an effort to pressure the employer to come back to the table and provide reasonable counter proposals to the demands that we are putting forward workers typically go on strike after negotiations have broken down or stalled and the goal is to compel the employer to return to the bargaining table and address demands uh strikes can take multiple different forms for one example is working to rule where we follow our collective agreement exactly to the t and for instance work only 10 hours a week as prescribed by the university uh additionally other forms of strike can be strategic rolling strikes where different departments undergo strikes at different periods of time and last but not the least the general the picture of what is a general strike where all of our workers simultaneously withdraw our labor and refuse to work up until the point that our me our demands have been addressed so how do we as a union decide whether uh, we go on strike or whether we provide a strike mandate even so going on strike is a democratic decision when these negotiations break down as they have in the case of our current negotiations the union can hold what is known as a strike vote where all members are invited to vote on what is known as a strike mandate if 50% plus 1 of all the voters vote yes that means that we have a strike mandate or a strike position a strike mandate does not mean that we automatically go on strike it means that we have the legal position to choose to go on strike subsequently 
It is a signal to Queens that we are ready to strike to improve our working conditions and that we support the bargaining team. Frequently, strike mandates alone are capable of changing the course of bargaining negotiations. But it is true that if we do provide a strike mandate to the bargaining team, then we are in legal position to choose to go on strike in the future. So do we, are we going to have a strike mandate vote? And if so, when? As I mentioned earlier, we filed for conciliation of uh, conciliation and are currently going to be meeting Queens uh, with the support of the Ministry of Labor. On the 14th of February, PSAC's regional office will conduct a vote for what is known as a strike mandate. If you are currently a member, you will receive details of how to vote on your employee email. If you do have a contract and you do not receive this information, please reach out to our information officer at the email ID mentioned here. This vote will be conducted in three windows across the 14th of February, virtually, as per safety guidelines. Uh, so the point of this is that we create a strike mandate and that we get into legal position to go on strike should we need to. Uh, the primary intent is to compel the employer to return to the table and address our demands seriously. So while uh, in the eventuality that we go on general strike, Queens is not obliged to continue to pay out our contracts. Uh, while they do have to pay you for all the hours that you have worked prior to going on strike, they can choose to not pay you after we go on strike. Uh, so in order to ensure financial security for all our members when we do go on strike, during the strike, you will be paid strike pay by PSAC, our parent union. Each member is entitled to $53 per day, up to a maximum of $265 per calendar week, which is five working days, and strike pay is not taxable. Uh, so this uh, allows for around uh, an amount of around $1,050 a month of non-taxable income. Members participating in the strike are expected to carry out assigned duties, such as joining the picket line, attending virtual events and actions, helping coordinate social media actions, and letter writing campaigns. Strike pay will begin on the very first day of the strike and will be paid to each participating member based on an attendance list or register. So before all of this comes to a head, what are things that we can do right now? Some of the most important things that we can do is put pressure on Queens through social media. Amplify the demands that we have made through social media. And if you need resources to post, share without creating your own, you can share PSAC 901 posts on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, sharing these posts and updates not only pressurizes the employer, it also provides other members within our bargaining unit information about what is happening at the table right now. Secondly, utilizing support from organizations such as the Alma Mater Society, which is the undergraduate student community at Queens, and the faculty union, CUFA. CUFA has written a solidarity letter backing all of our bargaining demands. And if you can share this faculties, uh, if you can share this letter with faculty within your department to co-sign, that is something that would be super useful. Uh, in order to find all of these resources, please use our link tree, link tree slash PSAC 901. Additionally, we will be hosting some town halls where we discuss the process of whether or not we should be going on strike and how to approach a strike vote. And if you if you have the time, please join us on the 7th of February uh, on Monday at 5.30 p.m. Details of how you can access the strike mandate town hall are also available on our link tree. Uh, so typically we would stop at this point for questions and answers, but since I'm presenting to my computer, I'm just going to sign off right now. Uh, I hope to see you at the town hall and subsequently at the strike, strike vote on Valentine's Day. Bye.